After the long journey, the desolate desert stretched endlessly behind Snake. As he drew closer to his destination, a glint of metal caught his eye. Looming in the distance, a newly deployed tank stood as a sentinel of outer heaven's defenses, a barrier between him and his objective. Shocked by the force of the blast, Snake backed up, unwilling to face the tank head on. Avoiding line of sight, he laid a trail of landmines, each one carefully placed a breadcrumb path of destruction for the unwitting mechanical beast. He took cover behind a nearby rock formation, his eyes intently fixed on the approaching tank. Eat this. The tank, a behemoth of metal, rolled forward, stalking its prey, its heavy treads kicking up clouds of dust. It hit the first mine. A deafening explosion ripped through the stillness of the desert. The tank shuddered violently, but stubbornly continued its advance. Come on, just a little closer. The tank, now damaged, triggered the second mine. Another explosion engulfed the machine in flames, its treads shattered, leaving it immobile and vulnerable. Seizing the moment, Snake rushed toward the crippled tank. In a daring display of agility, he leapt onto the tank, muscles tensing as he pried open the hatch. He tossed a grenade inside and jumped clear, rolling to safety. Huh? What's that? The tank erupted in a fiery inferno, a column of smoke and fire soaring into the sky. Snake watched momentarily as the flames consumed the machine. How the hell did they know where I was? The echoes of the explosion faded into the vast desert. Snake stood up, dusted himself off, and resumed his trek towards Building 2 his expression hardening in anticipation of the challenges ahead. The ruins of the tank laid smoldering in the background as Snake advanced toward Building 2. The fortress stood imposingly ahead, a stronghold brimming with secrets. Snake, cautiously approaching, halted as he observed an increased number of guards patrolling the entrance. Something was amiss. Too many guards. Security's tight. They were expecting me. But why? Snake, what's your status? Intel suggests they've increased security. How are they doing this, boss? I've been ambushed multiple times, and they seem to know my every move. It's like they're in my head. This mission, something's off. You need to stay focused, Snake. We can't afford to second guess now. In case they've tapped into our communications, I'm changing the codec frequency to 140.13. Understood, but if they're listening in, what else do they know? Just be careful, Snake. We don't know what else they're capable of. You'll have to use a disguise to get past those guards. It looks like the only way you'll get through. Okay, I'll find a way inside. But I need answers. It seems luck's been on my side so far. I appreciate the backup, boss. Stay in touch. He surveyed the corridor, spotting a lone guard standing near a doorway. Snake picked up a small piece of debris and tossed it down the corridor, away from his position. The sound echoed loudly and drew the guard's attention. Huh? What was that noise? The guard moved to investigate, his hand on his weapon. As he passed the doorway, Snake sprung into action. Snake grabbed the guard from behind, pulled him into a storage room, and rendered the guard unconscious with a precise chokehold. He quickly stripped the guard of his uniform and helmet, donning them himself. Okay, this'll work. Now disguised as a guard, Snake stepped back into the corridor, moving with purpose, blending seamlessly with the other patrols. His disguised form disappeared around the corner, deeper into the heart of Building 2's underground. Snake found himself in a vast waterway, a cavernous space echoing with the sounds of rushing water. Snake, still in his enemy officer disguise, cautiously navigated along the edge, his steps silent, his presence alert. As he moved forward, a gigantic armored bulldozer suddenly rose from the depths, blocking his path. Its operator, a burly guard, eyed Snake with suspicion. Halt. Identify yourself. Caught off guard, Snake quickly adopted a facade, saluting the operator while disguising his voice. Guard Unit 7, sir, just patrolling the area. Unit 7 isn't scheduled for this sector. You're in the wrong place, soldier. Explain yourself. Snake's mind raced, 
He suddenly reached for a flash grenade knowing his disguise wouldn't hold. Guess I'll have to make my own schedule. In a swift motion, Snake turned and sprinted away while the operator shouted alarms. The bulldozer roared to life, crashing through the wall in pursuit. Snake dashed through the waterway, the bulldozer barreling behind him, its engine thunderous. The walls trembled as Snake desperately navigated the labyrinth of corridors, the bulldozer relentlessly on his heels. Seeing a narrow passage ahead, Snake leapt through it just as the bulldozer crashed into the wall. As the bulldozer started to slowly break through, Snake realized it was a dead end. He was trapped. It's over for you now. With little time to spare, he prepared a grenade launcher found among his gear. There was nowhere to escape. Damn it, only one way out of this. He decided to risk it all. He readied the grenade launcher, took aim, and fired directly at the bulldozer, causing a massive explosion in the confined space. In the split second, Snake submerged himself in the water, using it as his only shield. The room erupted in flames and shrapnel, but he remained protected under the water's surface. As the water calmed and the debris settled, Snake emerged, coughing and slightly shell-shocked but unharmed. The bulldozer was a smoldering wreck. He took a moment to regain his composure, and then pressed on. Now out of the waterway, he found himself in a corridor that led to an unassuming door. He entered. It was an abandoned research lab. The room was suspiciously empty, devoid of guards or scientists. Madnar must have been here. Ahead was a figure hunched over a desk cluttered with papers and equipment. It was Dr. Madnar. Or so it seemed. Dr. Madnar, I presume? Uh, yes, that's me. Who are you? Don't worry, I'm here to get you out. But first, I need answers about Metal Gear. Metal Gear? I... I'm afraid I don't know what you're talking about. Don't play games with me, Doctor. I know you're the key to stopping that thing. The imposter's facade crumbled, revealing a sinister smile. He reached for a concealed weapon and fired at Snake. The bullet grazed his core. Ah! Ignoring the pain, he disarmed and pinned the imposter against the wall. Where's the real Madnar? Talk, or I'll make you talk. You'll never find him. Outer Heaven will bury you. You're a dead man, Snake. He searched the man, finding a keycard marked Research Lab. Another trap. They're toying with me. What the hell is going on? Snake exited the room with the keycard. He knew he was being played. But his resolve hardened. The real Dr. Madnar was still out there. Now with a slight inkling on where to head next, Snake continued deeper into Building 2. Heading towards the research labs, the air was thick with the tension of unseen dangers. Suddenly, a burst of intense heat and light filled the open hallway. The fire trooper, a fearsome mercenary clad in flame-resistant gear and wielding a flamethrower, stepped into view. His presence was menacing, the air around him shimmering with heat. Fire Trooper was originally a member of the elite German counter-terrorism unit, GSG-9. Skilled and disciplined, he soon found the confines of military life too restrictive. Turning to a life of mercenary work, he became an expert in using his weapon of choice, the flamethrower, handling it with the ease and accuracy of a rifle. His dangerous choice of weapon necessitated a specialized flame retardant suit. Hired by the mercenary nation of Outer Heaven, Fire Trooper became a living embodiment of fear and destruction. Flames licked the walls as the Fire Trooper unleashed a torrent of fire, trapping Snake. Welcome to Outer Heaven, Snake. There's nowhere to hide from me. I'll burn you to ashes. Snake ducked behind a crate, feeling the intense heat. The Fire Trooper, relentless, planned to engulf the entire room in flames. The heat was suffocating, the danger imminent. Can't stay here. Gotta keep moving. Find an opening. Realizing he couldn't stay put, Snake made a split-second decision. He took a deep breath and leapt through the flames, feeling the searing pain as they scorched his skin. As he emerged, he spotted the fire trooper. He was hell-bent on engulfing the entire room. In a swift motion, Snake fired a grenade at the trooper's feet. 
The explosion rocked the room, knocking the fire trooper off balance. Ha ha ha! You can't hurt me! This suit is impenetrable, Snake! We'll see about that. Snake, undeterred, seized the opportunity. He rushed the fire trooper, engaging in close quarters combat. Their struggle was fierce. The trooper's armor deflected Snake's strikes. In a bind, Snake's eyes narrowed, looking for any advantage. He spotted a vulnerability in the trooper's neck armor. He fainted left and struck, his fist connecting with the exposed neck. The fire trooper staggered, his flamethrower wavering dangerously. Snake in a frenzy delivered multiple decisive blows to the fire trooper's helmet, cracking the visor. The trooper collapsed, defeated. Snake staggered through the corridors, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The adrenaline from his battle with Fire Trooper was fading, replaced by a bone-deep exhaustion. Every step was an effort, his muscles screaming in protest. He remained alert, but the fatigue from his relentless journey was starting to become apparent. He finally came across a series of abandoned labs and offices. The scene was one of a hasty evacuation, papers scattered, equipment left in disarray. Amid the chaos, Snake found a document containing information on Outer Heaven. He studied it briefly, his jaw set firm. Snake's trained eye took in the details, searching for anything of importance. A glint of metal caught his attention. He reached down, picking up another document. It was a partial schematic of Metal Gear, the machine that haunted his mission. Snake's brow furrowed as he studied the complex design. Metal Gear, what are they planning on doing with this thing? Snake pocketed the document and pressed on. He entered a vast hangar-like space, the scale of it dwarfing him. More schematics and maps were scattered about, pieces of a larger puzzle that Snake struggled to put together. A sudden noise made him spin around, his gun drawn in a heartbeat. But it was just the hum of distant machinery, echoing in the emptiness. Snake let out a shaky breath, his heart pounding. His body was reaching its limit. The injuries from his battles, the constant strain of infiltration, the lack of rest, it all started to take its toll. Snake leant heavily against a wall, his vision swimming. As his codec beeped, the sound became unnaturally loud in the stillness. Snake reached for his eye droid, but his arms felt like lead. The room tilted around him as he collapsed to the ground. Got to keep moving. His body wouldn't obey. Snake's eyes fluttered closed, the exhaustion claiming him at last. The codec continued to beep, a lifeline that Snake was unable to grasp. I trust it will be complete on schedule, Dr. Madnar? Yes, yes, of course, sir. Everything is proceeding accordingly. TX-55 will be operational as planned. Good. Take him back to his cell. In the heart of outer heaven, a ghost of a man lingered. Venom Snake. Once the finest soldier of Big Boss's mercenary force, he was transformed into his phantom. Created through radical surgery and hypnotherapy, he was a warrior crafted to bear the legacy of another. His loyalty to Big Boss was absolute, his sacrifice unknowing. But beneath the veil of his new identity, signs of the man he once was lingered. Fragments of a past life. Yet, as he became aware of the boss's will through the memories of another, a conflict stirred within him. He grappled with the burden of Big Boss's legacy while trying to discern the true intent of the boss for himself. Venom Snake stood at a crossroads of ideologies. In one hand, the ideals of Big Boss, a mantle thrust upon him. In the other, a growing understanding of the boss's will, a path less defined, yet deeply resonant. Few words escaped him, yet his silence spoke volumes. In the quiet of his mind, the turmoil of his dual existence battled, contemplating the cost of the identity he embodied and the future he wished to shape for himself. I haven't forgotten what you've told me, boss. We have no tomorrow, but there's still hope for the future. 
In our struggle to survive the present, we push the future farther away. Will I see it in my lifetime? Probably not. Which means there's no time to waste. Someday the world will no longer need us. No need for the gun, or the hand to pull the trigger. I have to drive out this demon inside me. Build a better future. That's what I... What we... Will leave as our legacy. Another mission, right boss? <laughs>